Over the past 10 years of hunting and filming professionally, my journey has evolved. I once sought animals in adventure, and I still seek those things. Yet now more than ever, I seek answers around the growing questions that surround myself as a hunter. I've found that my connection to the land brings a certain clarity to the rest of my life. This is what brings me back into high country. Whitetails have always been something I've enjoyed hunting, but it's never been what's really fueled my fire. It's never been the driving force behind why I get up before the sun comes up or stay up into the late night. My dad, however, has always been driven by whitetails. Since I can remember, Dad has always been obsessed with hunting white-tailed deer and trying to take a truly big buck. He's tried all over North America, in the western states, some in the midwestern states, and even up into Canada, in Saskatchewan and Alberta. He's taken some nice bucks throughout his life, but he's never taken that one that he feels like is the buck of a lifetime. For years, Dad and I have traveled up to Saskatchewan hunting whitetails, but it hasn't been me that's brought us here. It's been following my dad and his pursuit of a truly giant whitetail buck. about noon on the first day. Super cold morning, windy. It's about zero degrees. Now the sun is starting to come out. Thank goodness they have me set up in this ground blind. I'm able to run a little Mr. Buddy heater when I need it. Guys gotta figure out how to make it all day out here because when they drop you off, you're here all day. You are in the elements. Highs today are supposed to be like 10. Lows around zero, maybe even into the negatives. I've seen four bucks already, which is a good sign. Anywhere from, I don't know, seven yards to 35 yards. Best buck I saw circled back in the timber and just kept pushing does. Tried to snort wheeze at him, but... Anyway, day one here, hunting Saskatchewan. Got the new prime bow. I'm stoked to try to break it in right on one of these big pug nose, just beast bodybuilders of white tails. Incredible how big these deer are. But just nestled in here, I'm back in the bush on the edge of the farmland here. So you got the farmland deer, but you also don't know what's going to come out of the bush. So 
they know that there's some good bucks here anywhere from 140 inches to 180 inches that they know are here. So who knows what might show up. Don't get me wrong, I love to put myself up against the challenges and I love to come into the far north in late November and try to kill a whitetail with my bow in these extreme cold temperatures and snow. It's become fun for me to try to hone my system in the ground blind to sit out there all day and hunt these whitetails. This part of Saskatchewan borders between where the farmland lies and where the forest stretches for hundreds of miles north. Depending on where you're sitting, there could be bucks here that nobody's ever seen. What I love about coming up to Saskatchewan for is the unknown. Hunting the boreal forest that stretches for hundreds of miles north there's no trail cam pictures of these bucks. Most of these deer have never even seen a human. It's really exciting for me to not have any idea what might step out. The method in which we use to hunt these deer is a little different. We're doing the best we can to put ourselves in areas where whitetails live, but trying to pick a trail in this huge expansive forest could be nearly impossible to pinpoint where a big buck might move through, let alone within bow range. So we use bait. We use different forms of bait to try to bring them in where we might be able to get a shot. And up here, that's just how you hunt deer. It's so thick, without the use of bait and pulling them into little clearings, it would be next to impossible to hunt these deer effectively. The all-day sits can be long, but when you see the deer that get pulled out of this country, it's totally worth it. The unknown of what might step out is what keeps you in that ground blind for eight or nine hours a day. I wanted to kill a buck bad, but honestly, I couldn't help wondering how dad was doing out there. I just so badly wanted to get a call or a text message, or even have him walk into my blind to tell me that he had finally got his buck. I was rooting for Dad. I felt like this could be the trip, 
Our timing was right, the bucks were on their feet, and we were the only two hunters in camp this week. So we really kind of had our pick of where we wanted to hunt. ends. On X begins. I was seeing lots of deer. I was seeing lots of bucks. Just not the right buck yet. But that feeling of sitting in the ground blind and being so comfortable and so close to these deer. I felt invisible, and it was a really cool feeling to just sit there and watch the forest. I hunt for those moments that my heart wants to beat out of its chest. I don't wanna to have to study an animal to make a decision. I wanna look at them and get so nervous I don't know whether to reach for the record button or my bow. And when I saw this buck, that's exactly what happened. And I knew this was the buck I wanted to try to get. Yes, guys. I don't want to talk too loud because the buck just ran right over here and stopped. The shot is far. It's not far forward, but it's definitely forward. And I think I busted through that shoulder. I could see blood pouring out when he stopped back in there like a hundred yards and he just stopped. And his tail was just flickering and flickering and flickering. I just kept expecting to see him go down, and he didn't. But, yes. Oh, man, that's what you sit in here for. It's freezing cold. It's literally freezing cold. I'm a little nervous about the hit. I'm not going to lie. It, you know, it's just a little forward. He was packing that shoulder back. I could see blood coming out. I mean, I think, I think I got at least one lung in there. So we're just going to wait it out, but day four in Saskatchewan with the bow. This is the new CT3. I literally just sighted this thing in, and it is sweet.
All right, well, we uh, I just waited for these guys to get in here. So we got on the blood trail right away and there was good blood. He did bed down a couple times up here and then got up and made a circle and just picked him up right over here, stone dead. So Saskatchewan buck down. Let's go check him out here. That makes me feel good. You always wonder about the hit and how good it is. And it's nice to know you did your job. Well, here he is. We just uh, walked up to him. Gave him about uh, three hours, and he's definitely been dead for most of that. It, I was a little afraid the shot was kind of forward, but man, it it obviously did good. So we're back in the thick of it here. It's about uh, just afternoon, so gonna take care of this guy and get back to camp. But this has been I was just talking to Greg the other day that I shot my first. Uh, bear here when I was 12 and I'm about to have my 40th birthday here on the 20th of November seven days away so tells you how long we've been hunting here and I couldn't be more pleased it's uh, the second buck I've taken up here with a bow and I'm sure it won't be the last sitting there behind my biggest white tail buck with a bow it was a great feeling. All the hard work and sitting out in the cold had paid off, and it even feels better to make a good shot. But what I was most excited about was the three days left that I had to hunt with my dad. Kind of nice. It is nice. It's a nice setup here. Pretty spot. Yeah, no kidding. It'd be nice when they start to get a few more deer back in here, like he was saying. You can start. Yeah, that's Deer moving around out there. Just not the right one. Fire. Now he's right behind that tree. I know. Not an hour before this happened, my dad looked over at me in the tree stand and said, Jason, you know this might just be the last time I get in a tree stand. I really didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to react so much that I didn't say anything at all. 
Then, to have this moment happen, the misfire on Dad's rifle. In what could be his last time in the tree, on the buck he's worked his whole life for. I was struggling to understand it. How could this happen to somebody that's been such a good man and worked so hard to put the pieces of the puzzle together? Why? And then I realized, if he would have got that buck, it would have been easy for him to call it quits. He finally got the buck he was after when he was ready mentally to hang it up. But then this happened. And he wasn't gonna hang it up like that, not after a lifetime of trying. And this year, we're scheduled to go back. It is nice. It's a nice setup here. Pretty spot.